I want to talk about Colorado and Texas Tech. So this was an impressive win for Colorado. This was an impressive win for Colorado. Uh, some of my notes, I'm just going to run down some of my notes, some of the thoughts that I had while I was watching the game. Um, I thought Colorado did a really fantastic job of keeping their composure. I think that is where Shador Sanders shines. Because of his composure, because of his ability to stay even kill, he is somebody that ultimately doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low. I have seen Colorado, like in that Kansas State game, they got way too high on themselves with two or three minutes left because they finally took the lead after getting their heads bashed in the entire game. Shador played a part in that as well. He was on the sideline, head nodding, head nodding to the music like it was a club, had his little towel on, he was feeling himself. No, bruh, three minutes left, go sit on the bench with your coach, with the offensive line, let people know we're going to get the ball back more than likely, and when we get the ball back, we're going to need to either kneel the game away and, and be in victory formation, or we're going to need to get a first down. Be ready, be ready, be ready. Not seeing that sometimes, and so ultimately... I think this is something that Colorado can still be plagued by because they had a couple terrible penalties where like, okay, DB made a play on, on, on a jump ball and they get a taunting penalty because he felt like he needed to look at the wide receiver and be like, I get that football is emotional. But there has been a clear approach all the way down from, it seems, the NCAA to the refs to limit players' ability to taunt and to celebrate. And there are way too many times where players are putting their teams in jeopardy because they want to take their helmet off and they want to shine in a different way than their play on the field. It's a shame to see that, no doubt, but you're going to continue to see it because ultimately there's, there's ego in the game. And that ego is going to always be there. Sometimes the ego is the reason why these guys are even where they're at, where they even made it, their ego and their discipline. So it's a part of the game It's a because it's a part of people. But don't like that. Don't like to see that. It's, those are the kinds of moments that can really hurt you and harm you where you were. They took a touchdown away from Jimmy Ward in one of their past games. I forget which game it was. Because he wanted to throw somebody the peace sign before he got into the end zone. Do I think that refs should do this? No. I think it's foolish. I think it takes away from how much fun these guys are having. But... It's a part of the game because the refs are a part of the game. The refs are constantly making their presence felt. And I think that if they had a leader on the defensive side, they got playmakers on the defensive side, a leader on the defensive side where it's that person's voice that everybody hears. Who is your Ray Lewis? Who is your Ed Reed? Just based on body language, if it looks like it's supposed to be Shiloh Sanders. It is not. More of my thoughts. Colorado did a great job of making adjustments on the defensive end by going from playing man to zone. They're constantly in man. That's what this is. That's all they want to do. Texas Tech was very creative with the way they were doing pick plays. They were running pick plays on the line of scrimmage. They weren't doing a, a, a pick play with their wide receivers where, you know, you're running a, a slant route and, and, and the guy in the slot next to you is two, three, four, five yards down the field as he's picking the defensive player. They were doing it right on the line of scrimmage. So it essentially was a block and a legal block. So Colorado did what they had to do to make the adjustment, and they were getting eaten up at the beginning of the game. I said at the beginning that I felt like um, Texas Tech has a couple wide receivers with Douglas and Kelly that can make plays, especially Kelly. And Kelly popped off at the very beginning of the game. He looked like he was poised to have an amazing game. Colorado made the adjustment, and then they went on a scoring run. I think they scored about five touchdowns to Texas Tech's one. Too many coaches aren't making the adjustment that needs to be made so that their team can absorb the blow that they just received in the first quarter, second quarter, but come back out lit bloody, but still punching, still vying for victory. And I love it. I would love nothing more than to see a Colorado BYU matchup in the Big 12 title game. And I would love nothing more than to see Colorado mess around and get a first round bye potentially and get into the college football playoff. What a story that would be for college football as a whole. No team is getting more eyeballs on them than Colorado. Nobody. So they mess around and get to the college football playoff. Oh my goodness, the advertising is gonna the advertising is gonna be insane. Iowa State lost again. And they lost to Kansas. Now this is a good and a bad thing because Kansas is a team that everybody expected to play very well at the beginning of the season. They didn't. And I think Kansas now has a uh, opportunity, an opportunity to still make the bowl game. Kansas has BYU next, they have Colorado and then they have Baylor. 
But the BYU and the Colorado game, those games are going to be huge. They're not competing for anything in the conference. They have three wins right now and three games left. They need all three for them to make a bowl game. That's something that Colorado absolutely has to look out for before Kansas, though they have Utah. And I'll talk about that in a bit. I felt like even though Texas Tech got over 100 yards rushing, this game and the UCF game was Colorado's best efforts against the run because they were able to keep Taj from Taj Brooks from breaking out at the beginning of the game. Because they did that, Texas Tech couldn't dominate the time of possession battle, like what happened in Miami. So Texas Tech is not able to dominate the time of possession battle. Texas Tech is forced to try to play this game where it's our receivers versus your DBs and your defense. So Texas Tech, they, they fumbled the ball twice. They threw an interception. There's three turnovers. You just can't win like that. And then to add insult to injury, Colorado had seven sacks, 11 tackles for loss. I mean, this is, this is a winning formula. That's how you win. Compare that to Texas Tech's three sacks. That, that's how you win. Warren Sapp, I don't know what the hell he's telling those guys. They're listening. Colorado's not the biggest bunch when it comes to defense, when it comes to the size of their alignment. But I think they use that to their advantage now. I think they're faster. I think they have and are playing with more pursuit when it comes to their D-line. And I think they're able to beat a lot of offensive linemen off the ball. They're playing with their hair on fire. This defensive line is playing right now, and the linebackers. That interception by Hill Green was amazing. It was ridiculous, and it was a great play to have the wherewithal of, okay, I'm not going to get to the quarterback here, but I'm going to be able to get my hands up and try to make a play on the ball. Amazing. Those are the kinds of, 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 of plays you need on your tape so you can go to the league, so you can continue to grow and evolve as a ball player. But Warren, Snapp is, Warren Sapp is doing something over there. He's coaching those guys up. They're playing completely different. They are challenging how well Colorado's offense, how well Colorado's receiving core and Shador have been playing. And yeah, okay, Colorado has always been, and this is why a lot of people always looked at them like, y'all are just flash. They've always had a receiving core, but they're running the ball a little bit now. And the fact that their defensive line is playing as well as they are now, they're starting to look like a team. They're starting to look more well-rounded. They got three more games left. And yes, there's the fear, there's the possibility that there could be a short, a hiccup or whatnot. But I think there's also the possibility that they're going to get better over the course of these three games. And there's nothing more important than for them to continue to get better over the course of these next three games. I love the fact that they're getting Will Shepard the ball. I want to see that happen a lot more. Will Shepard, Wester. I think it's time for Colorado to start looking for those few guys Target those guys, because I think people are expecting to see Travis do something special, and he will. But I don't want to see Colorado get into this habit, which they started to do on, against Texas Tech, of force-feeding Travis the ball, trying to get him these stats so that he can just make some kind of amazing plays. I think that's when you start messing around and forcing the game. You're forcing the miracle you want to see happen. And I think that's when you put your players sometimes in bad situations. Let Shador find Travis because Travis is open. Have specific plays that are for Travis because those are the plays where you know he can get open or you know the person guarding him just can't guard him, can't stay in front of him, or you see the coverage they're playing and you know how to exploit them. Or simply just start targeting Shepard and Wester and Ward because you know people aren't watching those guys the way they're watching Travis. But Colorado started to get into this habit of trying to force Hunter the ball. Hunter is starting to look a little bit more like anxious, wanting the ball, wanting to make plays. It's not a good look. It's not a good look on TV. It's not a good look based on the camaraderie that needs to be there between Hunter and, and Shador. I'm sure those guys are going to handle it. I'm sure they're going to talk about whatever they need to talk about and manage their emotions because they know that there's something bigger at bay. They know that there's something bigger to come, but it's not every time. It's not there's there's over 140 teams in college football in in Division One A, but not every single player on every team is getting Heisman notoriety. I personally do think Travis Hunter currently is one of the Heisman favorites. All he has to do is play. He's gonna ball. Even if he touches the ball five times, he's liable to make a play that ends up getting in the end zone. So you don't need to force him the ball. It's not a good look. I don't want to see anything happen where he gets hurt. Travis Hunter does get hurt quite a bit because he 
has the ball in his hands so much, the ratio is just there for the opportunity, the possibility of that to happen. So I, I, I just want to stay away from that. You know, it's one thing Dion says in some of his interviews at the end of the game. Oh, I wanted to get Shador another 300. I wanted to get him another 20 yards, get him to 300. I wanted to get Jimmy his 200. Come on, dog. You don't need that, bro. The highlight is the highlight. The stat line is something completely different. The stat line is all people might look at when they look at paper, but they got the tape. It's on tape what's, what's going down. All you need is the ball in your hands. All you need is the time of possession. And with the time of possession, he going to get the rock. But play it straight. You don't have to force it. You have other wide receivers there that are amazing. Western was the one who got on the got who scored first. Yes. Travis sprung him for a good block. For sure. Put that on his highlight tape. But get other guys the ball. If anything, I think it's a great time to start using Travis as a decoy. Start using him as a decoy. Yeah, Travis, we're just going to run you down the field for a couple plays because we want to occupy a corner and a safety as we send somebody right back behind their linebackers so that we can actually get something bigger there. But sometimes Colorado does get into the habit of trying to just force it a bit. Travis ends the game with nine catches and 99 yards. Wester had six catches, 82 yards. Shepard had eight for 79. This is great. This looks amazing. This looks, I mean, you can't complain with this, okay? This literally, you're looking at 23 receptions here. You're looking at 23 receptions between your top three receivers. That is amazing. I just don't want to see them starting to force the ball to Travis constantly. I've seen him get hurt too many times, random plays. He got hurt in this game, hurt his finger or something like that. Let's let's cut it off. Let's cut it out. Let's cut it out. Okay, Shepard can make plays on the ball. I think nothing will be more important than trying to get to the Big 12 college football, Big 12 championship game college football playoff game, and being able to have Shepard and Wester be in the mindset of not, I'm after Travis, I might get the ball. No, no, no. I, I think those guys going into those games feeling like, hey, I could be the starting receiver on any team as well. I can be the number one receiver. That, I think, is more important than force-feeding Travis the ball. Travis has a lot of opportunities to make plays on offense and on defense. So there's no need to force him the ball. If Travis is the one that ends up with only six catches and Wester would have had nine, Travis still could have messed around and had 99 yards because he's Travis. So I just don't want to see them get into the habit of forcing anything to get him the stats. It's too video game-ish, in my opinion. Don't go there. Don't You don't need to do that. Please don't get caught up in that, okay? They got Utah coming up, and Utah just came off of a big battle against BYU. This Utah team is not necessarily in a good place. I think this was their first game with their with their quarterback, Brandon Rose, and he played very well at the very beginning of the game. So I do think Utah is going to come into this game with some bad energy because of what just took place, both in the press and on the field. I think they're going to want to, they're going to want to win this game. They need to win this game. So that they can try to make a, a playoff, I mean, excuse me, a bowl game. I don't think Utah beats Colorado. I think Colorado wins this game by two, three touchdowns as well. I'd like to just see Colorado come into this game and start strong at the very beginning of the game.